Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander deck tech. Thank you to Game Grid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Today I am building one of the side commanders from the Commander 2021 decks as a bit of an extra feature for you, and that is Yodora Grave Gardener. Yodora is a legendary creature tree folk druid that costs four and a green and is a five five. He says, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you may return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control. It's a forest land, which means it has no other types or abilities. Yodora is a super interesting commander choice for me because personally, I've never built a mono green deck because they lack on certain things that make them consistent. In any case, I've found that this mono green commander really captures my imagination and can introduce a new interesting combo game to the meta. So this deck is a mono green combo deck aiming to use Yodora to infinitely return a forest to the battlefield after making it a creature and getting some sort of payoff from it. I will mention this deck is not very budget like my builds usually are, mostly from a couple of key pieces that we definitely need for the deck, but also from the fact that mono green has some limitations that we're running up against. Specifically, the biggest problem I came up against was the number of tutors that we actually have that actually do what we want them to. In this deck, almost all of the tutors tutor for creatures, and most of the tutors at that are particularly expensive cards. So that brings the price of the deck up to the $400 to $500 range rather than the $100 to $200 range like I typically like it. But I have found this deck to be a mid-speed combo deck that wins around turn 5 to 7 fairly consistently. So if you like the concept of this deck, go on and make it your own. I think it's important to start with the win cons with the combo pieces because it kind of puts everything else into perspective for the rest of the deck tech. So this combo needs our commander and at least two other pieces. The first piece that we need is something that turns lands into creatures. This is because when a creature dies, it will be turned to the battlefield under your control, flipped over as a forest land. So if we can turn that land into a creature, when that creature dies, it will go to the graveyard and then that will still trigger Yodora and bring it back as a forest and then we can do that infinite amounts of times. I've separated all of these combo pieces into creatures and non-creatures because creatures are going to be the easiest easiest things for us to find and thus the most impactful cards for the deck. So the two creatures that we have that can accomplish this feat are Ambush Commander and Embodiment of Insight. Ambush Commander will turn all of our forests into 1-1 one, one elves, and then it also has a sack outlet on it, letting us pay to sacrifice an elf and give something plus three plus three until end of turn. Embodiment of Insight will give all of our land creatures vigilance, which is nice if we want to go kind of an attacking strategy, but it will also trigger whenever a land enters the battlefield, and it can make that land a 3-3 three, three creature with haste, until end of turn. So both of these have their advantages. First of all, Ambush Commander has a sack outlet on it. It does cost mana, so it is really, really difficult for it to go infinite just on its own, but it can get us started getting some forests into play and looping some forests if we have that capability and we need something to enter the battlefield or die or something like that. So that can help us get started. Embodiment of Insight, on the other hand, will give that land that enters the battlefield haste, which means that we can tap it immediately for mana and then sacrifice it again to our sack outlet. So both of these have their pros and cons. In a vacuum, I would probably prefer Embodiment of Insight just because it can already give you that payoff of infinite mana. We also have two enchantments in this deck of Life and Limb and Living Lands, both of which basically just make all of our lands 1-1 one, one creatures that can both do what we want them to do. I've included these and not a myriad of other options that we can include because they only cost four and that can get out the turn before Yodora comes out and that can really help us with our curve. There are a lot of other options here, but these four cards that I've chosen are, from what I can tell, the most efficient way to accomplish this. 
Our next piece of the combo is a sack outlet. We need something to be able to sacrifice those land creatures in order to bring them back with Theodora. The only creature on our deck that really does what we want it to do is Sylvan Safekeeper. Sylvan Safekeeper can sacrifice a land at instant speed to give a creature shroud until end of turn. This is really cool on one level, but also kind of bad in another level. The, the cool level is that we can protect our entire board as long as we have this and one of our things that turns land into creatures. That's going to be really valuable to us if we don't have another way to pay off the loop that we can create with this. On the flip side, it doesn't give us a payoff other than protecting our board. So although this is the only creature that we can tutor up that does what we want it to do, it's not going to be enough to win you the game if you just have Sylvan Safekeeper, but it is an absolute must have for this deck. The rest of our sack outlets are artifacts, and that's really difficult for our deck to perform under because there are no artifact tutors in green, as we'll discuss later in our tutor section. The best two that you can have are Altar of Dementia or Zurin Orb. Altar of Dementia, if you have this and another piece of your combo, then you can mill everybody out really, really easily because you just have to keep on sacrificing them and you mill everyone out. Zurin Orb is free to play and then whenever you sacrifice a land you gain two life which means if you have this loop you can gain infinite life both are really nice and both give us a good foundation to win the game even if zurin orb doesn't win us the game right away this can essentially lock our opponents out of the game if they can't deal with our life total we then have ashnaut's altar and phyrexian altar both are pretty expensive especially phyrexian altar but ashnaut's altar will give us infinite colorless mana and phyrexian altar will give us infinite colored mana both of these are good but in a vacuum i would prefer to grab one of the other two just because they have payoffs that will basically win you the game. We also have High Market in this deck. It's a land, it can sacrifice a single creature. This is most likely not going to win you the game either because it can only activate itself once per turn basically, but it can start a chain off if we need it for something like Embodiment of Insight or something. And the last piece of our combo is the payoff. These are things that are going to, if we just have a sack outlet that isn't doing us anything, these are going to get us the gas that we need to win the game. Our one creature in this category is Scoot Swarm, which will make a copy of itself every time a land enters the battlefield. If you have six or more lands, most likely you're going to have them by the time you need to loop and you're gonna get infinite Scoot Swarms. Now, this does have to wait around a turn cycle in order to do anything, but you can keep them safe as long as you have a Sylvan Safekeeper, and it's really gonna be really hard to fight off that many insects. Next, we have the Great Henge, which will draw you a card anytime a creature enters the battlefield along with a whole bunch of other stuff that it's really good for. This is a must have for this deck because it's going to draw you a card every time you loop this combo and then you can find something else that will for sure win you the game like an Altar of Dementia. And similarly, we have Fecundity, which will trigger whenever a creature dies and do the same thing that the Great Henge does. Both of these are great. If you can only afford Fecundity, that's fine too, but the Great Henge is really, really good in this deck. All right, moving on to our tutor category, we have a lot of tutors in here and most of them will just find creatures, but that's okay because all of our combo pieces that we've discussed have a creature option that can get us ahead in the game. First, we have Fauna Shaman. You can pay one and tap it to discard a creature card and search your library for a creature card, put it in your hand. This is a really nice early play for you to start getting set up before you have Eudora out. Next, we have Magus of the Order and Natural Order, both of which basically do the same thing. Sacrifice a green creature to search for a creature and put it onto the battlefield. Similarly, Pattern of Rebirth will enchant a creature, and when it dies, we will search for a creature and put it onto the battlefield. All three of these are really nice for finding our combo pieces or one of our utility pieces that we'll talk about later. Next, we have Wirewood Herald, which when it dies, it'll search for an elf and put it into our hand. So this can be nice for finding either Ambush Commander or Sylvan Safekeeper, whatever we need at the time. Next, we have Court of Calling, which will find a creature directly onto the battlefield. And this is really nice because we can convoke it and usually we're gonna have a lot of creatures. Shared Summons is also really good because it can find us two creatures and put them to hand so we can find two different pieces of our combo. Next, we have Worldly Tutor, 
It's an expensive card, but you can find a creature and put it on top of our library, which is really nice. And then we have Planar Bridge and Inventor's Fair. These are two artifact-based tutors, but they're basically essential for this deck. Inventor's Fair will only tutor us an artifact, and only when we have three or more artifacts on the battlefield, and we are only running 10 artifacts, so this is the harder one to pull off. But if you're able to pull it off, then you can find your Great Henge or your Altar of Dementia and win the game from there. Planar Bridge will find us any permanent, so it can find us enchantments as well. Again, really nice for finding whatever we need in the moment. All right, moving on to our Ramp and Mana Dork section. So this has a lot of cards in it because we have to, one, have a whole bunch of creatures on the battlefield in order for Yodora to really work, and two, this is the best way to ramp in mono green, and this is a combo deck, so we're going to be wanting to ramp a lot, and we really have to have a consistent ramp package in our hand in order to have any sort of chance of success. We ideally want to be casting Yodora turn three or four if we can. For our mana dorks, we have our typical elf package. We have Arbor Elf, Devoted Druid, which is really nice because we can take it out without a sack outlet if we need to do that. We also have Elvish Mystic, Finhorn Elves, Lanawar Elves, Paradise Druid, Priest of Titania, Quirion Ranger, and Wall of Roots. These last three are really good. Priest of Titania will tap for a mana for each elf that we have on the battlefield. Quirion Ranger will untap one of our mana dorks and be able to return a forest to our hand, so if we need to replay one of our cards that we've already put face down as a forest, that can be really nice. And then Wall of Roots can activate the turn that it comes out, which is also really nice. We also have Lanawar Druid, which we can tap and sacrifice and untap all forests we control. This can basically double our mana in a turn if we need to, and this can get Yodora out really, really quickly. We have three creatures that fall into the category of Tutor Ramp, which are Solemn Simulacrum, Spring Bloom Druid, and Wood Elves. All three of these will find us a land onto the battlefield. Wood Elves will make it come in untapped, and Solemn Simulacrum will also give us a card when it dies and is an artifact that helps with our artifact strategy. We also have two Planeswalkers in this deck, which are Nissa Who Shakes the World and Nissa World Waker. The first one will double all of our forest mana, which is really nice for accelerating us. Even if it costs five and can be harder to get out in the earlier game, this can lead to some pretty explosive turns. The second one will untap forests that we control, up to four of them, so it almost replaces itself when it comes onto the battlefield, and it can help us more in future turns. Next we're playing some instant and sorcery ramp with Cultivate, Haro, Rampant Growth, Nature's Lore, Sky Shroud Claim, and three visits. You'll see that four out of the six here will bring a land onto the battlefield untapped, which is pretty important for accelerating our game as much as we can. And we have some artifact ramp with Arcane Signet and Soul Ring. I did think about putting in some others here, but I felt like the more instant and sorcery ramp and the more mana dorks that we have, the better for this deck. Next, let's talk about card advantage. So beyond the ones that we've already talked about that are payoffs, we have a couple that are going to be important as well. First, we have Beast Whisperer and Guardian Project, two staples in green. Very, very good to have, even though Guardian Project isn't a payoff for us because it the forest will enter the battlefield as something called forest, which obviously we're already going to have some of those if all of our lands are creatures. It's still helpful for getting our mana dorks out to help propel us along even further. Same with Beast Whisperer, again, whenever we cast a creature, that's just going to be really helpful for moving us along. Next we have Harmonize, really good, just draw us three cards. That's come in handy a lot of times, especially in the early game before we get Yodora out trying to fuel our hand finding our combo pieces. Next we have Mind's Eye, which will let us pay one to draw a card whenever an opponent draws a card. That can help accelerate us along, especially if we're not doing so hot when we are able to cast Mind's Eye. And then we have Abundance, which will let us, instead of drawing a card, reveal cards until we find either a non-land or a land, whichever is our choice, and then we put that into our hand instead. This is also really valuable for finding our non-land cards because at a certain point we won't need to get lands anymore and so this can help us filter through our deck. And last we have Genesis Wave, which we're 
naturally going to have a lot of mana, especially about the turn after we cast Yodora. So that is going to be helpful for looking at a whole bunch of cards from the top of our library and finding a lot of valuable cards from there straight onto the battlefield. I've had games where I cast this and I get all of my combo pieces and I win immediately. Our next section is on our recursion and self-mill sub-theme. So the card advantage that I've already included is not necessarily enough to really propel us along as much as we need. So we need a whole bunch of stuff that self mills and then a bunch of stuff that gets that stuff back. First we have Golgari Grave Troll which is really really nice if we can get it into our graveyard and then instead of drawing we mill the top six cards of our library and then we can get something back there. Obviously we shouldn't do this unless we already have one of our regrowth effects but this is really nice for getting a whole bunch of cards all at once. Next we have Seder Wayfinder and Mulch, which will basically look at the top four cards, find us a land or maybe a couple of lands, and then put the rest into our graveyard. This is going to fuel our graveyard even more and hopefully get us some other combo pieces that we can pull out. And then next we have World Shaper, which if we get the chance to attack will let us self-mill some more, and when it dies, if we did end up getting any lands into our graveyard, those are just going to return, and we can take advantage of them after that. And for our regrowth effects, we have Balagad Recovery, Regrowth, Noxious Revival, and Eternal Witness. All of these are really, really good, and Eternal Witness is especially good for our creature tutors because we can grab it, put it onto the battlefield, and get something out of our graveyard. So it's just like tutoring for a combo piece if something ended up in the graveyard. You can add more regrowth effects if you want. I've found that these ones are sufficient for the amount of self mill that I've put in the deck, but if you want to go more heavily into that theme, go right ahead and add some more in there. Okay, our last section before we talk about our mana base is our interaction and kind of our utility section. So these are just cards that didn't really fit in anywhere else, but are still really good for the deck. We have Beast Within and Kenrith's Transformation as our interaction pieces. I chose Kenrith's Transformation because one, it's pretty cheap, and two, it draws us a card, and three, it deals with basically any creature that's bothering us on the battlefield, and then Beast Within will get rid of a permanent, which is also really good. Next, we have Ashaya, Soul of the Wild. Now, this is kind of a weird one in the deck because it will make all of our creatures into forests, but it won't turn all of our forests into creatures. So it isn't one of our combo pieces, but this can help us accelerate our ramp. This can help us if all we have is a way to sacrifice a land and we don't have any lands to sacrifice. This can help us get the Eudora chain rolling. And it's honestly just a big beater as well, so you can go that route if you need to. Next, we have Thousand Year Elixir, which will let us tap our land creatures when they enter the battlefield to give us that mana. This isn't necessarily needed if you have Embodiment of Insight on the battlefield because that basically does the same thing already. But if you have one of your other turn land into creatures combo pieces, then this can be really helpful for getting infinite mana. Speaking of infinite mana, we have Walking Ballista and Hurricane, which were both payoffs if we do have infinite mana that we can use immediately. I didn't put these up with the other payoffs because infinite mana is not the only way to win with the infinite combos. And more often than not, it's harder to get that infinite mana combo than it is the other things. Additionally, Hurricane doesn't necessarily win us the game if we don't have more life than our opponents, so that can be a bit of a problem there. And Walking Ballista is a creature that we can cast for free and immediately let die and gives us a forest, so at worst, it's ramp. So there you go, Walking Ballista is ramp. Next, we have Asceticism, which is really good for protecting our board, letting us give everything hexproof. And since we're going to have a lot of mana, that regenerate is also a nice clause if we are running behind a little bit on our combo pieces. And last, we have Yeva Nature's Herald and Vivian Champion of the Wild, which will let us cast creature spells as if they had flash, which can help us flash something in at the end of someone else's turn if we need to hold it up for interaction or asceticism or something like that. Lastly, let's talk about our mana base, and this is nothing special really. We've got 27 forests and a myriad landscape. We also have that high market and inventor's fair in the deck that we talked about earlier, so we're running a total of 30 lands. Because of the amount of ramp that we have, I've found that this is sufficient to get you to where you need to be, even though it's kind of lower than you might expect for a mono green deck. So 27 forests seems to be enough for what I'm looking for. 
And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this deck tech, go over and check out our Patreon. We have lots of different tiers that you can sign up for. My favorite one personally is the one that lets you sign up for our Discord. You can talk to us all day. We talk about different builds that we're brewing. We talk about the spoilers that are coming out. We It's generally just a really good environment to be around. We have a ton of fun on that Discord server. So that tier is only $5 a month. If that sounds interesting to you, go and sign up. And if any of the other ones sound interesting to you, check those out as well. If you're looking to buy any of these cards, head on over to the affiliate link in the description below for Game Grid Lehigh. They ship nationwide. You can go through that link and find any of these cards that you need. You can buy the deck list if you want. And they've been a great help for us in building the channel. So thank you to Game Grid for sponsoring us. Stay tuned for more gameplays and Commander Deck Techs. You can follow us on social media. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.